We've been measuring the health of democracy around the world through freedom of the world for 50 years now. And the main story of freedom, that freedom of the world tells us is that democracy has been under threat. So every year for the past 17 years, uh, there have been more countries declining in political rights and civil liberties than those that have had improvements. And this year, for the first time in 17 years, that that the distance between declines and, and increases has kind of narrowed. So my hope is that perhaps we're at a turning point in this uh, struggle for democracy. There is a sense of hope we haven't felt in some time. Democracy will always be under attack because there will always be individuals and governments who know that their power is either derived from the people or from violence. And when they don't give that choice to the people, they've got to hold it by violence. I was in prison because Nicaragua is a dictatorship under Daniel Ortega. So anyone who wants to raise a voice for democracy, for freedom, for human rights, has been persecuted. But also, not, in, not only myself, the student leaders, women, members of uh, youth organizations, uh, journalists, they were all arrested. Freedom House has been a, has been a, a very helpful partner for civil society organizations in Latin America, particularly for those who live in, uh, in non-democracies, in autocracies. Our vision at Freedom House is that we live in a world in which all people are free. And to do that, we want Freedom House to be the most authoritative, independent voice on behalf of freedom. We want to be able to mobilize governments, human rights defenders, and others on behalf of freedom, and we want to directly support the people who are on the front lines of fighting for freedom. When we feel lonely, when we feel that we are being ignored, when we feel like the news of brave women in Iran are being buried under some, you know, other so-called important news, then organization like Freedom House can help us to be heard. Courage is unquestionably the greatest characteristic that we see in the activists that we work with in every country. These are people who are courageous to go to the streets, to raise their voice, to print the articles, and to speak truth to power about the reality that is going on in their country. What Freedom House is doing is showing to the world that the problem of political persecution is universal and it should be addressed globally, that although these uh, human rights violations uh, happen all over the world, the stories are very similar. That's the beauty of this organization, that is composed of a team of people that actually have their skin in the game, so to speak. They know how important it is to, to be a lifeline to those on the ground, and I think that that's what makes this organization a fantastic partner. Freedom in the world is absolutely an indispensable guide to the health of freedom. Policymakers, the government, human rights activists, and others use freedom of the world in terms of their policymaking, in terms of their advocacy. We know what freedom is and we call things as we see it in a fair, objective, and nonpartisan way. And that is a very powerful tool that has made the difference in policymakers knowing how to shape their actions, in activists on the ground having a document in their hand that's objective, that's analytically rigorous, to go to their government to say, what you are doing denies us freedom. Investing in democracy through education, not only through charity, which is important, but supporting institutions, supporting uh, activists, supporting human rights, is a way in investing in a world that is safe, a future society that also allows us to have decency. And I think that that's why it's important to shed a bright light of those principles in countries where we are suffering the darkness of authoritarianism. 
Democracy is not only the best system of government, in the end it's the only system that protects the values that we all hold dear.